Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. Today we're going to talk about section 1.3 in the next three videos. Uh, this section deals with multiplying and dividing whole numbers and an introduction to area, which is an application to multiplying. We're also going to touch on averages, which is an application of dividing. But we'll see those in the later videos. Now, this is part one of three. And the first thing we're going to look at is multiplication. Here I have my representation of an egg carton. And if I were to ask you how many eggs are in there, you could go through counting them. Or you could look at it in terms of, well, there are uh, four eggs in a row and four eggs in the other row. And if I add those up, I have eight eggs in this carton. Now, <clears throat> What I'm doing here is I'm adding 4 to 4. I'm re repeating an addition. When we have repeated addition, that is the definition of multiplying. And when it comes to multiplying, we can rewrite this. I have 4 two times. Times is a word that we use to indicate multiplication. So if I have 2 times 4, and what I'm introducing here is a multiplicative dot. And you'll see that right here. And we'll talk about that in a second. 2 times 4 is also 8. So we get the same result. I have two rows of 4. Now, some of the terms I used was in just, not just multiplication, but I also said the word times. And I used the word of. Of is a key word in a lot of application problems that tell us to multiply. I have two rows of 4 eggs which gives me a total of eight eggs. This is called the product, and these are called factors. The values that we are multiplying together are factors, and they give us a product. So just to uh, make sure you understand the different representations of multiplication, we have 2 times 4, and sometimes we use this x. As we advance in math, we find that this can be a little confusing, especially when we introduce variables. And we talked about variables in a previous video. Here we have the multiplicative dot 2 times 4, also equal to 8. But this is just another way to show multiplication. Sometimes we use an asterisk, 2 times 4. It says the same thing as our x or our multiplicative dot. And then this one here, this is called multiplication by adjacency. One of our values is in parentheses. It's saying 2 of what's in this parentheses, 2 times 4. So that's also multiplication. Here we have multiplication as well, except both quantities are in parentheses. Multiplication through adjacency, we have 2 times 4, the quantity 2 times the quantity 4. So be aware that all five of these different representations mean multiplication. So next, we're going to take a look at some of the properties of multiplication. And the first one is the multiplication property of 0. One thing we should know, if we have any number, which I'll call a, times 0, well, any number times 0 is 0. And this is the multiplication property of 0. 0 times anything is 0. And it also has a property in division, which we'll see in the next video. So make sure that you understand these properties. It's kind of like the terminology. Knowing the terminology will help us understand the properties as we move forward. The next one is the multiplication property of 1. Well, if I have any number, and I multiply it by 1, it equals that value. This property is also called the identity uh, property of multiplication. Because if I multiply any number by 1, it identifies that number. If you recall when we talked about addition, if we add 0, that was the additive identity. Well, 1 is the multiplicative identity. It identifies this number. If I multiply any number by 1, I've identified that number. The next is a commutative property. And if we recall the commutative property of addition, if we had two values, we could add them in any order. Well, that also applies to multiplication. If I have two values, a times b, and this time I'm using an asterisk, it's the same thing as if I had b times a. Let's look at an example. We've already seen 2 times 4, which equals 8. Well, that's the same as 4 twice, or 4 times 2, both of them would give you 8. 2 times 4 or 4 times 2, the order doesn't matter. And 
we have to watch what symbols we're using to indicate multiplication. The next is the associative property. The associative property is when we have more than two values that are being multiplied together, a, b, and c. Now, we could multiply the first two values together. And now I introduce the parentheses. Still means the same thing. a times b is all multiplied by c. Or I could say a times b times c. Again, the order that I multiply them doesn't matter. I could even say a times c times b in that order, and I'll still get the same value. That is the associative property. Now, there's one more property of multiplication. And we're going to move over here. The distributive property basically says, if we have the sum or the difference, we can distribute this multiplication to each value within those parentheses. So if I have a times b plus c as an example, it could be plus, it could be minus, doesn't matter. I'm going to distribute this to each value. a times b and a times c. And then I could do the addition if I knew what those values were. And that's called the distributive property. I can distribute to each one. Now, if we look at this example, I could say 4 plus 2 and is 6, and then multiply it by 3. 3 times 6 is 18. But I want to show that the distributive property holds true. So if I say 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 times 2 is 6, 12 plus 6 is also 18. So we get the same result. So the distributive property holds true. One thing that will be very beneficial before you even get too far into this section or attempt the homework is make sure you know your multiplication tables. You have to know how to multiply. So make sure you review that. Here I have a difference. So I'm going to say, well, OK, I'm going to use the distributive property because I have these parentheses. 3 times 8 is 24. And 3 times 6 is going to give me 18. Now I can find that difference. 24 minus 18 will give me 6. Well, let's see if that holds true. 8 minus 6 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. So we get the same result. The distributive property holds true. This will become very useful when we do introduce variables into equations, because we can't find the difference of a number. We're not sure what it is. Now this one here, we have 7 times 36. We don't see this summer difference, but we can still use this tool of the distributive property. Now, usually when we multiply numbers, we write them horizontally and we multiply. Let's do that just for a moment. 36 times 7. 7 times 6 is 42. And you can see why it's important to know your multiplication tables. 7 times 3 is 21. 21 and 4 is 25. So 36 times 7 is 252. Well, I can use the, the distributive property here to get that same value. And I'm just going to take this number and think of this in expanded form. 36 is the same thing as 30 plus 6. Hopefully, we all agree that that's the same thing as 36. And I can multiply it by 7. So instead of doing my math horizontally here, I can do it vertically. 7 times 30, well, let's just look at that 3 for a moment. 7 times 3 is 21 with a 0 on the end. And 7 times 6 is 42. So I did the distributive property. 7 times 30 is 210. 7 times 6 is 42. These are called partial products. If I add my partial products together, I get 210 plus 42 is 252. Maybe you want to write that out vertically and combine it. But you'll notice I got the same result either way I multiplied it. All right, let's look at three more examples. This asks us to find the product of 13 and 9. When it comes to the English language, we have to identify some terms. Product tells us to multiply. We also might be told, multiply these two values, or uh, find you know, the product of 13 and 9. Of also tells us to multiply. We'll see that quite often. So we're going to times 13 and 9. So maybe I do it horizontally here. 9 times 3 is going to give me 
27. I carry the 2. 9 times 1 is 9, plus the 2 is going to give me 11. So I get 117. Now, if we think about this, that 9 times 3, that 27 was a partial product. 9 times uh, 1 in the tens place, which would be 90, 90 and 27 is 117, those partial products. Now here, I'm going to use the distributive property for this one. 13 times 21, which is 20 and 1, 21. That sum is, still holds true. So 13 times 20, I look at that 2 and say, well, 2 times 13 is 26. In the tens place, a 26. In the tens place, I just add a 0. And 13 times 1 is 13. 260 plus 13 more is 273. So instead of writing it vertically, 0 and 3 is 3. 6 and 1 is 7. And the 2, 273. Now let's look at this one. As the numbers get larger, sometimes they're harder to keep track of. So maybe we just want to do it vertically like we were originally taught. So we do it this way. 5 times 3 is 15. Carry the 1. 5 times 2 is 10. And 1 is 11. Carry the 1. 5 and 1 is 6. This is a partial product. Then we go to the tens place. 4 times 3 is 12. I'm going to put a 0 there just as a whole placeholder, because we're in the 10 spot. 4 times 3 is 12. I carry the 1. 4 times 2 is 8, plus the 1 is 9. Nothing to carry. 4 times 1 is 4. This is another partial product. If we sum our partial products together, we're going to get the product of the multiplication. So we get a total of 5,535. So try a few on your own, and uh, good luck. Thank you.